unbowed, unbent, unbroken. The words of House Martel, a promise to our enemies and a challenge to our lovers. Thousands of years ago, the warrior queen Nymeria crossed into Dorne from Essos, fleeing the dragon lords of Validia. After she landed, she burned her ships, all 10,000 of them, so no cowards could slink home. What a woman. Dornish in spirit before she ever was in flesh. She was lucky to land in Dorne, where powerful women are not locked away in seps and the beds of old men. My ancestor, Mors Martel, saw her and desired her, and proved that where armies fail, a tongue may succeed. Wedding his strength to hers, his spear to her son, they subdued all his rivals together. After the tradition of her people, House Martel then ruled Dorne as princes, not kings. Unless the eldest child was a daughter, for unlike the rest of Westeros, our loyalty isn't commanded by a cock. We follow a prince or a princess Martel just the same. And we always have. Some people forget that Aegon Targaryen crowned himself lord of six kingdoms, not seven. When his sister marched on Dorne, she found no mighty hosts drawn up against her for her dragon to burn and her soldiers to slaughter. The sands swirled, men died, and her dragon saw nothing. The sun shone, men died and her dragon bowed to our greater fire. The Targaryens retreated with their tails tucked between their legs. Of course, in later years, his descendants would try again. Daeron I succeeded at great cost and reigned in Dorne for a few glorious months. One night, his steward pulled down a sash by his bed to summon his consorts. Instead, the canopy split open and a hundred red scorpions fell on him. He was a Tyrell. You would think he would be used to getting stung. Within a fortnight, House Martel again ruled a free Dorne. Eventually, after centuries of courtship, House Martel got into bed with the Targaryens. We took King Daeron II and his sister for our own before they could take each other, and six kingdoms became seven. Even now, I do not blame my ancestors. One look at those long, silver locks it is not every day a man gets to ride a dragon. But they soon learned that you can't leap off a dragon at will. My sister Elia, she married Prince Rhaegar Targaryen and became the princess she already was. In Dorne, she walked among vipers and none would bite her. In King's Landing, she found herself surrounded by lions. When Robert Baratheon rebelled against his rightful king, his future father-in-law, Tywin Lannister, ordered his beast, Gregor Clegane, to rape and murder my sister, along with her helpless children. And men called the Lannisters heroes. Now, Lannisters sit on the Iron Throne, surrounded by the blasted swords of Aegon's broken foes. I wonder if they remember, as I do, that none of those swords are ours. I wonder if they see, as I do, my sister's red blood soaking into the stones of their precious red keep. Maybe they need reminding. The lion may be a mighty beast, but pride always lifts his gaze to the horizon, never seeing in the grass the viper.